Good afternoon. This is Iceland calling. So welcome to Reykjavik. My name is Pirlo Anna and, and I am a democracy advisor at the Human Rights and Democracy Office in the city of Reykjavik. Um, I will just dive right into my presentation, which I have chosen to call Democracy in the City, Direct or Representative, Past, Present and Future. So I'm very honored to uh, have been invited to speak to you all and thank you for my, to, to my society, for the team, for hosting this event and thanks to you all for participating and listening even in these strange times. I thought it would be a, a good idea to begin my slideshow by uh, showing you a picture of Reykjavik, of our beautiful Reykjavik and use the opportunity to uh, encourage you all to visit uh, Reykjavik as soon as we all can start traveling again. And um, this picture is of, uh, of our pond here in Reykjavik and up in the right corner you can see the city hall where I am speaking to you from. So, um, uh, who am I? I am a political scientist, studied at the University of Iceland and became interested in direct democracy 14 years ago. And the topic of my bachelor thesis was referendums, pros and cons. And the question I put forward was whether there was a, uh, a, well, if they were a good method for society to reach a collective decision on controversial topics. Uh, I also asked whether, what, what other, if any, methods there were to, to be used that do not come with the difficulties of referendums, such as uh, the public debate, uh, the uh, the populism or the costs and, and uh, all that, that comes with referendums. And to make a long story short, as you all probably know, there is not a simple answer to these questions. And after my bachelor studies, I worked at the university with my professor on his research and on direct democracy at the local level in Iceland. And we edited and wrote chapters in a publication, which is, in a, is a guidebook to direct democracy for municipalities in cooperation with the Icelandic Association of Local Authorities. So a conference like this is very exciting for a nerd like me. The only sad thing is that we couldn't all meet in person. So uh, where have we been? Uh, I will be telling you a little bit about how we do things here in Reykjavik City and what our thoughts and future plans are. As some of you may know, the city of Reykjavik has been running a PB, or participatory budgeting program, for eight years now, which means that it is time to reflect. And I am actually reflecting, uh, using this opportunity to reflect, so I would be grateful for all questions and comments afterwards. Um, I would like to emphasize that I am a public servant and I speak to you as such, but people like me need people like you to, uh, and vice versa, for the future of direct democracy to become as great as it possibly can, and it probably will be. Sometimes it is useful for me, and as you can see on the slide, I made uh, a description of, of, of a more modern family. The direct democracy is, uh, uh, you can imagine that it being a, um, a modern family where all diversities are welcome, where everyone has a role and is equally and important. So our platform is called My District, the PB budget. Uh, um, for the past eight years, as I said, uh, we've been running this uh, project and we call it My District. It started in the form that we now know it. Uh, with the comedian who became mayor. And the point here being that it was the, the agenda was set by politics, which I think is a very important factor. Because if you want an inclusive democratic process to thrive, it needs a strong representative democracy. A project like ours, which is very time consuming, expensive and complex for the people working the project like me, we need space, resources, capital, support, and understanding from our directors and elective representatives to be able to make the project a success. And also a successful project like this does give a lot in return. It gives us a feel for the people, 
a better feel for the district as well. It gives us a reason, not that we need any, but it gives us a chance to communicate on a collaborative project which initiates a conversation between people with a joint interest of district matters, which is very valuable. So if I describe shortly uh, how our project works, it begins in March every year with the idea collecting when we start collecting them on our online platform. In May, we review the ideas with various uh, re relative experts within the administration who determine whether the ideas are valid or not. And for them to become valid, um, they must meet a certain criteria. Firstly, they have to fit within the budget of the district. Second, they have to be implementable in the city land. Thirdly, they need to comply with the planning of the area. And uh, they need to, of course, uh, be within the rule of law. So last year, we received over 1,000 ideas. About 400 of them were valid. Uh, 250 of them ended up uh, on the ballot in 10 districts. 25 in each. Usually we consult with the district councils to make the decision on which of the valid ideas go on to be voted on. But last year they were inactive, so we invited the public to participate in open houses and select the final ideas. And uh, uh, civic tech could obviously have helped in making this process easier in, 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 in the spring when we went through this, but, but that's another story. Um, all ideas that go forward uh, to the election phase are pre-designed to give the voter a better idea on uh, the end result, what, what it would look like. So and then the voting takes place in uh, November, October, November. Last year, there were 91 ideas elected to be executed next summer in 2020. So from the moment we begin receiving the ideas until all voted ideas are implemented and executed, there can pass from 18 to 20 months. And the cycle has begun again before it has run its course. So in these 18 to 20 months, there is a lot of reviewing and consulting done within the administration. For example, authors of the elected ideas are invited to participate in development and designing of their ideas. Also, all other authors of ideas get an individual response, an explanation on why their idea was not accepted. But the, the, the dilemma of direct democracy is, and yet, in spite of all our efforts to make the project as transparent and collaborative on every level, we find ourselves frequently in a dilemma. To give you an example, I can name a few concerns that we have. Firstly, the process of deciding which idea, ideas are valid and implementable takes place in the administration. And once the decision is made, it is final. Here, technology could be of much help in making this decision more, more transparent, which hopefully would generate a more understanding and less dissatisfaction. Each year, we learn something new and make some adjustments and changes to our process. And this is one thing that we are trying to figure out how to solve. And to keep up with our constant changing environment, the platforms also need a constant development. And another thing that is concerning is the participation rate, which, is, uh, which in 2019 was 12.5%, which was the highest number of turnout we've had so far. And lastly, I would like to mention that every year uh, when ideas, the elected ideas are being executed, we get into a heated discussion with neighbors and stakeholders who are unhappy with some aspects of our implementation. No matter how hard and nicely we try to explain and find solutions or a middle ground, sometimes it works, but not all the time. Maybe there uh, will always be people strongly for some ideas and some other people strongly against them. Maybe it's not to be helped. 
But even as uh, it, it has even happened that politicians say no to an idea that has been elected and the residents make strong claims about wanting it implemented. There we, the officials, find ourselves between a rock and a hard place. Maybe again, this is something civic tech could provide a solution to. These are just examples of some issues we faced when working the project. Now, uh, now I want to turn off the slide so I can talk to you directly. Um, I receive a lot of calls from researchers and journalists from all over the world who are interested in our work. When asked, I always tell it like it is. Many times I get the feeling they are overwhelmed when, uh, when they hear about how much work it really actually is. And make no mistake, it, it, it is a lot of work, but it is rewarding and necessary work that pays off in so many ways. And we'll do even more so in the future if we continue to develop and strengthen our processes. The civic tech industry, which will hopefully develop methods to make the steps for us, the officials, fewer and easier in the future. Um, and now I want to tell you a little bit about where we are at the moment. My district is not the only uh, project, online project that, that we use to, uh, in the attempt to engage in a democratic discussion with the people, with the public. The platform Better Reykjavik, where my district is hosted, also hosts other projects, for example, My Voice, which is a platform that can be used to engage in discussions on various things. For the second time now, we have used the platform uh, to invite people to have a say in policy making. First, when the education policy was in the making in 2017, and also we recently opened a new page as the city of Reykjavik is in the process of making its first democracy policy. In the policy making phase, it, this platform is the part where people can freely express all ideas regarding the relevant topic at each time. In trying to get people to participate, we use all our resources to advertise and encourage people to take part. When this method is combined with an open meeting and randomly selected focus groups, we feel that we have exhausted all possible ways to give people the chance to make an impact on the policymaking process. In addition to these platforms, there are two others that we are using. One of them is uh, resembles the platform Fix My Street, as I'm sure you all know. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the fact that there are different projects on different platforms with similar looks and similar names, it, that makes it confusing for the users. Two years ago, we asked a consulting firm to look at all our processes and advice on how to move forward uh, and if any changes were needed. The review concluded that we needed to simplify and make decisions on what to keep and what to strengthen and how. And the question we asked ourselves was, what is it that our users need and want from us? This is still a work in progress, but I can tell you that we have decided that the project, my district, will from now on be executed every other year instead of every year. Um, and we put even will put even more emphasis on uh, cooperation throughout the process of the project on all levels. And also, I can tell you that some changes will be made in the definition of the project. So uh, to the final part of my presentation, the future, as I spoke about earlier, uh, we are in the process of making a democracy policy, which will hopefully be presented this summer for reviewing uh, of the public as a part of the implementation process. The idea is to present a democracy policy that emphasizes the importance of cooperation and clear opportunity for the public to participate in the development of the community. The policy will outline how, how the public can be active in decision-making processes throughout the city where it is relevant and interesting for each and every person. In the attempt to reach these kinds of goals, many 
approaches are needed. And here are the family members. I want to try to um, share my slides with you again, if it is possible. Yes. So, um, here they are. Um, in the attempt of reach uh, these kinds of goals, as I was speaking about uh, how the public can be active in decision-making processes, in the attempt to reach these kinds of goals, many approaches are needed. And here are the family members of the direct democracy family that I spoke about earlier. It cannot be emphasized enough that in the end, all of the components of direct democracy need to work together. To explain a little bit, the components of democracy policy could look possibly look like they they are they look like this: uh, open and transparent governance, access to elected representatives, active district councils, active student councils, parent associations, neighborhood associations, citizen meetings open, few and clearly defined platforms of citizen participation. And possibly some new experimental um, methods like mini publics and such. And, and on all of these, uh, uh, in every aspect, uh, civic tech could be useful. So, uh, a few and uh, clearly defined platforms of citizen participation is, is, is what we are, are going for and are in the process of designing. So uh, all of these methods are a are an aim to reach the same end goals: active citizens who participate in decision-making processes that lead to a fruitful discussion and collective research results in, in the collective results in the local community. For this exciting future to become real, we all need to support each other and keep developing and communicating. And also, as I said in the beginning, if you want an inclusive democratic process to thrive, it needs a strong representative democracy to go with it. Civic tech is already and will continue to play an important role in the future of democratic processes. Hopefully it will keep on developing and offer new exciting revolutionary ways for governments and local authorities to communicate and involve the public in decision making. So basically to all of you who are developing platforms in, in any type to help us officials to do our work better, I want to encourage you all to keep on going. So uh, I would like to conclude with these words and uh, thank you all for listening and uh, I hope we will get a chance to talk later. <laughs>